Hello and welcome back to another seasonal roundup where we sort them out into must watch, maybes, and not gonna bother. I'm joined by the ever so lustrous Ali again. Thank you, thank you. Without further ado, we're gonna start off. First anime is an anime that I've known about for a while. I've seen the manga be recommended to me for a while as well. It's called Boku no Suma wa Kanajo Ganai. It means my wife has no emotions. This anime is a special one. <laughs> uh, I, I, I see. Yeah. Takuma is a single guy who does nothing but go to work and come home. Too tired to do chores, he decides to get a robot to cook and keep house. Mina-chan is such a good housekeeper, Takuma jokes that she should become his wife. Mina takes Takuma's joke seriously and slowly the two start doing more things together, like having a picnic outside. As time goes by, Takuma starts to fall for Mina, but can a human and a robot even have an equal loving relationship? I personally will not watch this show. It's a robot and a human and I can't I just can't even though it's done by Tezuka production but I will not be watching this show I don't know about Ali though uh it's a maybe I like my rom-coms it is a rom-com it's so a rom-com Ali with a it. robot I'm not going to see a man it's a rom-com with a robot it's the best it's the best way Shinmai Osa Bokensha Saikyo Party ni Shinu Hodo Kitairate Mutenki ni Naru The rookie middle-aged adventurer was trained to death by the most powerful party to become invincible. It is common knowledge that it is best to become an adventurer when you are as young as possible because the magical power that is the basic basis of an adventurer's strength will hardly grow if you don't train it while you are young. But this man Rick Gladiator, who became an adventurer when he was over 30 years old, had the combat power of an s rank adventurer, the highest rank in the world. In fact, Rick has lived an unimaginable life with the members of the legendary Ori Halcon Fist, a party of the continent's strongest adventurers. From dragons to vampires, Rick's fighting powers, trained by his literal monster Mentors. I'm going to be I'm going to be I'm going to be fighting what? Power. Powers. Powers? Prowess. Oh, oh prowess. It's just there prowess. You go. Okay. How I there thought it said powers. Right. There Rick's you go. fighting prowess trained by his literal monster mentors allows him to defeat an elite adventurers one after another who try to underestimate him. I, I thought this was going to be like, oh, middle-aged guy, overpowered, goes on adventures to actually beat other like monsters and stuff. No, this is just, oh yeah, I'm, I'm strong. I'm going to go fight other adventurers, elite adventurers, and beat them. Kind of like a bully anime. Kind of. The opening's done by the guy who did uh, the... <laughs> Inst Ultra Instinct theme in Dragon Ball Super. He is, he's, that's the guy that's singing the old ka 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 chidazu zoom zoom zoom. Oh, yeah, I see. One. He's the one that that's one. singing it. The studio behind this, I had a look into what anime they did beforehand. I don't trust the studio. You made that company. It says a lot when the one anime that you know they're known for wasn't good. I mean, they did Digimon as well. This is in between a maybe and not gonna bother. I'm gonna be completely honest. Um, I'll give it one episode, um, but I think I'm probably not going to bother with it. It's it's again it's 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 just a maybe for me because well action adventure fantasy I I like this sort of stuff. Malgun Saikyo no Maju Sushi wa Ningen Data, the strongest magician in the Demon Lord's army was a human. Right, this just reminds me of I was chilling in my thirties. That anime, Mao's army's strongest magician. I'm called Ike. Uh, a demon capable of capturing a fort alone. Clearing away enemies with immense magic, he is without a doubt a monster awed by friend or foe. However, he has a secret he can't tell other demons. I actually am a human, you know. Using modern knowledge to keep his secret, he became treated as a great commander and the driving force of Mao's army. Right, this really is just chilling in my 30s before he was ousted as a human. This is a maybe, 100%. I'm gonna give this a chance. Yeah. I like my overpowered shows. Oshi no Ko, second season. Before we carry on, this is already <laughs> a must watch for everyone. Of, of course, the, the, I, I know the rumors about like the latest, uh, few, the few latest chapters of the uh, of the manga. But um, we're not, we're not gonna dive into that for 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 anime purposes only. This is a must watch. 
the next entry is Tas Tasuketsu. The story follows a group of five in a world where people have suddenly disappeared. A mysterious self-proclaimed emperor gathers five people together through anonymous message and has them participate in a game. Participants answer the question, do you want to live or die? The game only has one rule, majority dies. So, so hold on. So if basically, if the majority answers live, they all die. Like the ones who answered live. The ones who want to die, if they, if they, if there's not enough numbers uh, or more than live, uh, they live. I don't know. I I'm gonna be. <laughs> the, the, so, I don't know that much about this show. Um, there's no. It's there's nothing going really on in the background. Weird. I mean, it's what the psychological superpower, action, drama, and suspense. Yeah. Oh, it's a web manga. Okay. It's a web manga. I'm. Yeah. I'll give it. I'll give it a chance. I'll, I'll say it's a maybe. Um, just because maybe. I have no idea. I have no idea yeah. what this show is. I mean, we've got Suda Ken in one of the, the main roles. So everyone loves to see yeah. the Ken. Of course. Um, Ken I'm just looking and there's no main character. <laughs> Ali, there's no main character. What? Hold on. What? <laughs> what? You mean the five people mentioned in the synopsis? They're they're not they're there's they're not the no main, main character? character. There is no main character. <laughs> <laughs> the show with no main character, we found it, Ali. It's this show. Amazing. Toki Doki Bosoto Russia Go Dereru. Tonari no Alia chan. Alia san. Ilya. Alia. Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. O okay. <laughs> That's a title. <laughs> Smart, refined, and strikingly gorgeous. Half Russian, half Japanese. Alisa Mikhailovna. Mikhailovna. Kujo is considered the idol of her school. With her long silver hair, mesmerizing blue eyes, an exceptionally fair skin, she has captured the hearts of countless male students while being highly admired by all others. Even so, due to her seemingly unapproachable persona, everyone remains wary around the near flawless girl. One of the few exceptions is Alyssa's benchmate, Masachika Kuze, a relatively average boy who spends his days watching anime and playing gacha games. Ayo, <laughs> relate with relatable so much. Based. Despite his nonchalant demeanor, Masachika is the sole student to receive Alyssa's attention. Unable to be fully honest, Alyssa is frequently harsh on Masachika and only expresses her affection in Russian. Unbeknownst to her, however, Masachika actually understands the language, yet simply pretends otherwise for his own amusement. As the odd pair continues to exchange witty and playful remarks, their relationship gradually grows more romantic and delightful and Alyssa might finally learn to freely convey her true feelings okay this is a must watch it's done by Dogokobo I love Dogokobo they're doing Oshinoko this anime I've known about this um, light novel for a while I've known about it since 2022 I want to say so it's been around two years I've, I've seen the posters I've seen things about it I've, I've, I've gone out my way read things ahead of time so I do know certain things that are happening I really like the chemistry between the main character and the girl so this for me is already a must watch because of how much I know about the show I'm going to take Mo's word for it for this being a must watch it does sound quite interesting uh, but the main character is voiced by uh, Usaka Sumire who is an amazing voice actress she's done quite a few roles that most people know about so Lum from Urise Yatsura is one of them the big ones that she's done recently uh, but she's very very um, talented Hasso got it out I, I have a loads of Fujiyoshi friends but my <laughs> god I don't like talking about BL <laughs> Hasso got it out focus this is not gonna bother for me because don't watch BL. In front of a camera, roommates Mao Tsuchiya and Hisachi, Hisashi Otomo make three promises. Mao must not tell anyone about Hisashi, tell anyone Hisashi is gay and in a relationship with another man. Hisashi must never fall in love or make any advances on Mao and one must not disturb the other's personal time. Thus begins their second year cohabitation. However, everything starts crumble when the film club, of which Mao is a member, wants to cast Hisashi in the lead role for the upcoming movie. The problem arises with the movie's plot as it is about boys' love, a romance between a delinquent and a class president. 
Uh, Mao is adamant to dissuade Hisashi from becoming the protagonist due to the first promise, but to his surprise, Hisashi is easily convinced by the director. After imagining Hisashi as the delinquent he is playing, Mao becomes overly conscious of his presence. He knows Hisashi is just a friend and out of his reach, but Mao cannot keep lying to him anymore. His feeling towards his roommate may no longer be purely platonic. This is not gonna bother. Let's go on to the next one, and that's it. Ramen Akaneko. Meet Tamako, who's found her way into an interview at a ramen shop run solely by cats. Oh my god, this would be this is amazing already. When the feline manager asks if she likes cats, Tamako admits that she's actually more of a dog person. Oh no. Only to be hired on the spot. Yo! But then her job description isn't quite what she expects. Rather than serving ramen, she's now a dedicated cat taker. Ho? Oh, this is just going to be a really right. wholesome one. The reason why I'm annoyed again. Oh, look, it's comedy. Because I know this one as well. It's a shonen jump manga. I know this show. Also, Hayami Sayori is one of the main casts. I mean, come on. Hayami Sayori and also Ken Suda. Yeah. But my problem is, is Ali's talking about all the shows I want to talk about today. And it's hey, look, you picked this order, okay? <laughs> it wasn't me. You picked so this, this order. This right now is a maybe. It is a maybe because the manga <laughs> itself was kind of slow. Next one. This one is one of those ones that's complete trash. This is a trashy show. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stepsister but and the, romance. The anime is called Gimai Sekatsu. Days with my stepsister. No synopsis section, another one. So get this guys, get this. Man, woman, yeah, go to the same school. Their parents get married, but they tell each other we're not gonna talk about it at all at school. They try to get around this, but they stop falling in love with each other. But they're step siblings. Where have we seen this before? There was domestic girlfriend. Honestly, these shows are always trash. Not gonna bother for me. I I, I can't with these shows, man. I can't do these shows. <laughs> Next one, Hazure Waku no Jotai Icho Skill. De Saikyo ni Nata Ore ga Subete wo Jurin Suru made. Failure frame. I became the strongest and annihilated everything with low level spells. Hmm. Trashy anime. Overly exposed girl. I am Sayori in the cast. Isekai. It, it's checking all the trash boxes and also Hayami Sayori. Synopsis. Abruptly catapulted into a fantasy world. Mimori Toka and his classmates have been summoned by the world's resident goddess to serve as heroes. Luckily, most of the students display amazing skills upon arrival, except for Mimori, whose abilities bottom out at a measly E rank, with no further use for him. The goddess banishes Mimori to a dungeon from which no one else has returned alive. Yet, as it turns out, Mimori's skills aren't so much worthless as they were abnormal, abnormally powerful even. If Mimori can only claw his way back to the surface, nothing will stand in his way from getting prepared. Yeah, it reminds me of Ad Fureta and my instant death cheat skill. But um, this is a maybe. It's a trashy is a card. Next one. All right, this is the one that I actually want to talk about because if I remember correctly, this man the manga won an award back when it was um, um, the manga was still going. So the manga has finished for this one. So we might actually get a complete show. The the the, the show in question is Senpai wa Otono, uh, Otoko no Ko. Uh, senpai is a Otonoko, which is Senpai is a boy. Honestly, this show is already a must watch because it was highly regarded when the manga first came out. Makoto Hanooka is a womanly second year student. Easily attract other people's attention. First year student Saki Aoi is no exception and she falls in love with Makoto at first sight. Having a vibrant and vigorous personality, she does not hesitate to confess her feelings to her senior. However, Makoto differs significantly from the person Saki perceives. Makoto is not a girl, but rather a cross-dressing boy. After revealing his well-known secret to Saki, Makoto expects her to be disgusted. Surprisingly, she is instead captivated by this revelation. Nonetheless, he still rejects her. Saki's determination does not stop her from declaring that she will become his first love. With Saki and his childhood friend at his side, Makoto's words brighten, giving him strength amid his struggle between his interests and the expectations placed on him. So it is a girl that falls in love with the cross-dressing boy. So this is like a pure rom-com with a cross-dressing boy. I've seen the trailer. The trailer looks pretty good. It's project number nine. They're pretty good with their animations as it is. So honestly, I, I do have pretty good expectations with this one. This is a must watch. Nice. 
So this is already a not gonna bother. So I haven't watched the first season. Maybe I'll watch it before, but this is a not gonna bother straight away. Uh, but the anime is Megami no Cafe Terrace Season Two. The cafe's terrace and its goddess goddesses Season Two. Two point five Jingen no Ryurista. Two point five Dimensional Seduction. This anime I've known about for a while. <laughs> This is a two core, so this is a 25, 24 episodes. So the reason why it's 2.5 in the title is because it's 3D mixed with 2D. So so he likes 2D girls, but a girl cosplays them. So that's the reason why it's a play on with that. So a 3D girl cosplays as a 2D girl. I have no interest in real girls. So claims Okimura, the president of the school's manga club. It's your typical otaku, obsessed with a sexy, fictional 2D manga character known as Lillian, Liliel. Uh, then the new school year starts and a real 3D girl named Lilisa, whose passion is cosplay, joins the club. Lilisa convinces Okamo to become her photographer. And guess who her favourite manga character is? Not only that, but Lilisa is into modelling the fetishy stuff. The boundaries between 2D and 3D start to blur as this heart-blooded romantic comedy unfolds. First of all, this reminds me of uh, My Dress Up Darling. Me, personally, I'm going to watch this show. I, there is no doubt in my mind I'm watching this show. Not because I'm a man of culture. I read the manga. That's all it is. So I'm watching this. So for me, this is a must watch. Next one. Why am I getting the longest titles ever? Because it's English. It <laughs> is the only English word there. Of course, my English. Ore wa subete wo pari suru. Yaku gan chigai no sekai saikyo wo bo wa boken sha ni naritai. I parry everything. The Kingdom of Clays faces a dire crisis. An assassination attempt has just been made on its own princess, Lineberg. Li Lineberg? I, I think that's Lineberg. And its neighboring countries I that the and they, its neighboring countries I the aftermath like starving vultures plotting the kingdom's downfall. The ensuing conflict will shape the face of the continent for centuries to come. But Noor doesn't have a clue about any of that. Having freshly arrived at the royal capital after over a decade of rigorous, isolated training at his mountain home. He's dead set on achieving his childhood dream of becoming an adventurer, even if the only skills he possesses are useless ones. Sure, he can parry thousands of swords in the span of a single breath. But everybody knows you need more than that if you want to be an adventurer. Our hero's road to making his dream come true will be long and arduous. arduous. But if there's one thing Noor's not afraid of, it's some good old-fashioned hard work. I'ma watch this. This is a maybe, but I'ma watch this. I'll, I'll, Action, adventure, fantasy is my yeah, sort of Yeah, I'll definitely say it's a, fan, it's a maybe. Uh, it's done by OLM. That did, they did the Komi-san anime. They also did Pokemon. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it's a maybe. Ali's right with that one. Tensi no Sakuna, Sakuna Hime. Uh, Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. This is based off the Nintendo Switch game of the same title. I'm going to be honest, this is not going to bother. I haven't finished the game. I still, I think I've only gotten five hours into the game and just wanted to play quite a bit. Yeah, so this, if I remember correctly, here we go, Mo's little corner again without synopsis. Humans invade the land of the gods and Sakuna finds them. She's the god of fertility, soil-wise. She tries to hide them, but she gets found out and her punishment is to take these humans go to a land and make them live like a prosperous life so it's her trying to you know make a good living out of a bad situation we're not going to indulge ourselves this is not going to bother on to the next one dungeon no naka no hito dungeon people an unexplored dungeon filled with monsters and traps an expert thief searching for her lost father when clay del delves into the dungeon deeper than any adventure has ever gone she's offered a job by the dungeon's caretaker now, instead of exploring, Clay must learn how to in interview new monsters, set traps and position slimes around the dungeon. Will this new career path bring her any closer to finding her father? Okay, yeah. I guess. Yeah, this is a maybe. I, I, I enjoy these kind of shows. Yeah. I kind of want to see. It is done by OLM yeah, as so well. It reminds so me of uh, Dungeon Black Company, uh, Mekyoku Black Company, something like that. Um, it reminds me of that kind of show where they make a whole business out of the dungeon. 
Um, so we'll see what happens. So this is the fever dream that we always wanted. Uh, Isekai Suicide Squad. <laughs> Let's go. And you know, everyone should be. Hey, you, you need to read the read the English title. Man. Sorry. Um, suicide Suicide Squad Isekai. I'm so sorry. What I love is Mori Calliope, the VTuber, is doing the ending, and I don't know why. It just, just she just is. Wit Studio. It's done by Wit. I'm so happy it's done by Wit. Wit is such a good studio when it comes to action. Um, in the crime-ridden city of Gotham, Amanda Waller, the head of Ar Argus, RGUS, uh, has assembled a group of notorious criminals for a mission. Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Peacemaker, Clayface, and King Shark. These two villains are sent to the otherworldly realm that connected to this world through a gate. It's a world of swords and magic where orcs rampage and dragons rule the skies. And Isekai. <laughs> oh, I'm just getting feet shivers, man. With a lethal explosive planted in their necks, there's no running or hiding, and failing the mission means one way ticket to the afterlife. Can Harley Quinn and her crew conquer the perilous Isekai realm? Brace yourself for a pulse pounding saga of the elite task force known as the Suicide Squad as they embark on a jaw dropping adventure. This is a must watch. I don't care what anyone says. Harley Quinn's voice actress, uh, Nagase Anna, is perfect for this role. Honestly, um, Nagase Anna, the main. Yeah. She, when I heard her voice as Holly Quinn, I kind of wanted Fedora's eye, but she absolutely knocked it out of the park when I heard her voice. It's a, it's a must watch. Rendizer Yu. Duke Fleet is a survivor of the Fleet planet who is escaped to the Earth on board a mysterious spaceship where is raised by Dr. Yumon as his adoptive son and known as Daisuke Yumon. Years after his arrival, he's faced with the threat of King Vega and his army who want to conquer the Earth. With his friends Koji and Hika Hikaru, and later his younger sister Maria Grace, Duke decides to fight back using his best weapon, the Almighty Grandizer. This is a remake of a 1977 show. It is a classic in that sense. This is a this is a classic show. So we'll give it a maybe. We'll give it a chance. I'm always okay with them remakes. Sometimes they hit, sometimes they miss. There's also a lot of good voice acting. Yeah, I've had a look. Shimono Hero has been the main guy. Honestly, love Shimono Hero. They need to from Team Slayer. So we'll see what happens. Nige Jozu no Wakagimi, the Lucy Samurai. For you do not know, the Lucy Samurai is the following work for the original person who did the assassination classroom you you can see a lot of the character designs being influenced from that so this is a very good show um already a must watch and he's not even going to get an opinion in this time again this is a must watch eight year old uh tokiyuki hojo the next successor of the kamakura shogunate is a young boy lacking talent in everything besides hide and seek one day his carefree life is abruptly turned upside down when taka uji ashikaga Bruti seizes power from the Kamakuras, ending their reign. Rescued by a self-proclaimed prosthetic priest, Tokiyuki manages to escape with his life. Now he must evade those trying to kill him while recruiting comrades who can help him restore the Kamakura Shogunate to its former glory. Set during the Nanbokuto period of Japanese history, Nigajozo no Wakagimi is a tale of redemption, documenting the life of the forgotten hero that altered Japan's destiny by running away. It is based on certain true things, but it's an allegory for it, so there are some fictional status with this show. In the anime, the manga, sorry, they, we've already gotten to the timescape, uh, there's certain things happening, so honestly, I am kind of want to see you how far along they go because there's quite a lot of the manga out at the minute. Kono Sekai wa Bukanzen Sukiru. Quality assurance in another world. Nicole is just a village girl working at the inn until the day dragons invade, and she meets Haga, a scholar of everything around him. He's a part of an elite society called Seeker, created to address a series of m maladies. Milady? Plaguing their maladies, plaguing their usually peaceful world. But both Nicola and Haka have secrets they hide. One that will change each other's very existence. Ah yes, quality assurance, am I right? Takashire is one of the main characters, so it's quite nice to see that. I'd probably say this is a maybe, Ali. I've, I've watched the trailer. The trailer looks fun. It, it's a maybe. I, I'm not convinced by the synopsis of this being something good. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, but right now, it is a maybe for me. A fairy tale, a hundred year quest, also no, a fairy tale, hundred and quest. 
Oh, I'm just so happy that I get this show is coming out. I loved Fairy Tale. I know people don't like Fairy Tale that much anymore, but I loved it. The Hundred Years Quest is a mission so challenging it has that it has remained unaccomplished for over a century. While countless mages have attempted to take on the grueling objective, their results ended in either overwhelming defeat or worse. Nonetheless, Nuts Dragneel and his friends Lucy Hartfelia, Grateful Buster, Urza Scarlet and Wendy Marvel, along with the exes Happy and Charles, <laughs> Carla, sorry, <laughs> Charles, <laughs> just, <laughs> just Charles is Carla, but Charles, Charles um, ambitiously embark on the quest. A year after the fairy tale girl has overcome the diabolical forces of Acnologia and Zerif, Natsu and his team trek into the northern continent of Gil- um, Giltina, where they seek out the employees of the 100 year quest and receive their nearly impossible mission. To seal away the fire dragon gods, a group of individuals with such vast power that could cause global devastation. Meanwhile, a spirit new member named Torka is recruited to fairy tale. Although her vibrant energy and passionate nature makes her perfect for the guild, there seems to be more to her than meets the eyes. Determined to accomplish their seemingly insurmountable mission, Natsu and his friends begin their treacherous search for the dragon gods. However, once encountering a new dark guild named Diabolos, along with the newest recruit of fairy tale revealing her true colors, Natsu and his team will find that the 100 year quest isn't the only challenge that they face. Right, this I've seen and read and done everything that I can for the 100 year quest to prepare myself. And it's going to get absolutely insane. I'm looking forward to this a lot. So this is already a must watch. Next one. Zero Saiji. Start dash Monogatari. Yeah. Um, this anime is actually really weird. This is five minutes per episode. Lilia, the newborn daughter of a Marquis, has the memories of her previous life. With cheat-like gamer knowledge, she aims to become the strongest girl in this new other world. So maybe there's nothing really to say. Just... Is maybe is what it is. Yeah, there's no trailer. We all know there's two voice actors. So Kina, Kino Hina is she's very good at doing very childish characters. So uh, it's nice to see that she's doing it still. Shika Noko, Noko Noko, Koishi Tantan, my dear friend Noko Tan. No one knows Torako used to be a delinquent. All of her classmates only know her as the perfect student. But everything changes when Noko Tan, a transfer student with antlers, enters her life. Antlers aren't the only thing strange about Nokotan. Her dear nose can sniff out Tora, Torako's secret past. What? Whether it's at school or the zoo, chaos follows this doe-eyed girl's every step. Torako has so many questions. Is Nokotan a deer, a girl, or something in between? Yes. So this show reminds me of the lies we uh, tell, the lies we tell, and then the something telepathy the one where she was an alien but was an alien but could speak an alien dialect so that was a weird show uh, that was a boring one but the lies we tell was actually pretty funny so for that it's going to be a maybe it's done by wit studio so i will give wit studios anime normally a chance but this is a this is a comedy i've watched the trailer it reminds me of things like non non biori i will watch it um el san wa yasu re nai uh, plus size elf. It's um, if you watch the dumbbell anime, it's kind of like that, but it puts much more emphasis on thick. Um, now, Kun, uh, a massage therapist, is about to head home for the day when he is saddled with a rather strange patient. The lovely lady has emerald eyes, pointy ears, and grew up in a forest. Everything about her screams elf, except for one thing: her bodacious body. <laughs> <laughs> you love the bodacious spot in it. It turns out she left her world but loves junk food in this one. And now her obsession has caught up with her. Can Noe Kun help this lovable elf girl lose the weight and keep it off? So I never went around watching the manga because this anime got greenlit. So I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll give it a chance. I've seen the concept art and the goals are proper thick. And I mean this with loads of seas we had that boost we had that busty girl last season these girls are thick but it's still a maybe shoshiman series how to become ordinary let's help each other and aim to become perfect ordinary citizens kobato who once had a bitter experience through deduction activities known as wisdom work was determined to become an honest and humble citizen reciprocal relationship with his classmate osanai who shared the same aspiration 
planning to make their high school debut as ordinary citizens and lead peaceful days. However, for some reason, mysterious incidents and misfortunes keep coming one after another into their school lives. Will Kobato and Osanai be able to achieve peaceful days as ordinary citizens? This is, it reminds me, Skip to Loafer. Um, so this is done by the author of Hyoka. So it kind of reminds me more like of Hyoka. The animation in the trailer absolutely looks crisp. Um, so it's still a maybe, Eve is doing the opening. So that's a plus side, I guess. Yeah, we shall see. It's a maybe. We'll see how it goes. Sue to Surugi no Wistoria. Wistoria's wand and sword. Will Surfer dreams of keeping his promise to a childhood friend by becoming a Magia Vandar, one of the magi mighty magicians who sit atop the Wizard's Tower. However, he is unable to cast even the simplest of spells, leaving him to fight dungeon monsters to earn credits at Red Garden Magical Academy. As if that weren't enough, he finds himself putting his sword skills to the test against a bullying professor. Oh, there's no thing about him being overpowered. Maybe. Yeah, Ali? We'll go maybe. Yes. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Isekai Yurui Iko Koso Date Shinagara Bokensha Shimasu. A journey through another world, raising kids while adventuring. Seems to be a wholesome uh, thing, but let's read the synopsis and find out. I'm terribly sorry. A god was suddenly prostrating in front of Kayano Takumi. He was apparently killed by a mistake. Moreover, he can't be reborn again. However, according to God, he would be able to live in a different world. But he made a mistake again and transferred him to, into a dangerous forest where he finds a pair of children and decides to take care of them. This, uh, uh, this is like farming life. Like, oh, let's just throw, throw you into a forest. Guess you got kind of killed. Nobody no yep. I was thinking of the one where he becomes a slime master and uh makes his own washing services yeah th there's not it's just a maybe there's not much to say about this cool it's yeah. like adventuring with children vtuber nandaga haishin kiri wasuretara densetsu ni nateta youtuber legend how i went viral after forgetting to turn off my stream 20 year old former weight slave yuki tanaka now works among her idols the streamers of live on or they live on you decide in the comments below. Um, one of the Japan's top VTuber companies. As a gorgeous, polite Awayuki Korone, she delivers only the most ladylike content. Unfortunately, her subscriber count and savings are at the rock bottom. One evening, after Yuki thinks she's ended her stream, she cracks a few cold ones and more than a few crude jokes. While watching L Live Ons, Live Ons video archive, um, but her viewers hear it all and clips of her bawdy drunk commentary go viral overnight. Yuki thinks her career is over until her manager reveals that everyone at Live On Live On has been waiting for her to stamp all along and gives her free to raise a drink on the street. What? <laughs> this is like if, um, what's the thing? V, what's the, um, v Sojo or something. They're like, oh, hey, Mo Mori Calliope, do your thing. Just don't do anything. Like Niji Sanji as well. If they if they were like to their actual VTuber saying, "Hey, do what you want." Mm -hmm. How now free of all frame purity, she jumps right into a new rowdy drunk character, and is welcomed into the fold by her fellow live on live on uh, VTubers, who turn out to be just as crazy as she is. With her views and finances skyrocketing, Yuki's work for the first time in her life is actually fun. I'm not gonna bother with this, Ali. <laughs> like, yeah, straight. Yeah, I, I would, I would have, I would have guessed anyway. Mayonaka Pun, a comedy about two new tubers who are active on YouTube, the world's largest video posting site. If I remember correctly, the manga is pretty good. Uh, Feroz Eye is one of the main character. I really do like Feroz Eye's voice quite a bit. It's very uh, identifiable. The trailer looks fun. Genuinely, it looks like an actual comedy. So I will give it a maybe because I keep comparing it to shows that I've seen like this before. Uh, like um, my next door neighbor is a, de a, a magical girl or demon girl, whatever it was called. So honestly, it just reminds me of those kind of shows. Kasute maho sojo to aku wa takitai shiteta. Uh, the magical girl and the even lieutenant used to be arch enemies. 
Uh, the manga tells the story of Mira, who leads an or- evil organization trying to take over d- and destroy everything. Earth is under attack, but a magical girl named Byakuya Mimori stands up to Mira's group. As they face off, something unexpected happens. Mira falls in love with Mimori. Um, this reminds me of Love After World Domination. This is a very old uh, manga. Uh, 2013 so it's very old so it's kind of, I like to see when what happens though with these kind of shows so honestly I'm gonna give it a maybe um, it also reminds me of Irina the vampire cosmonaut that's a show that I never thought I'd remember um, but yeah but I like both those shows one more than the other so I, if it's going the comedy route I will enjoy it it's still my studio bones love bones so honestly yeah it's a maybe Isekai Shikaku no longer allowed in another world. Oh my god, this is like... this guy got banned from another what world. If, what if you wanted to isekai, but the world said no? Nuh-uh. What do you and, mean, nuh-uh? Nuh-uh. An adventurer in another world with cute girls by your side and video game-like powers. Sounds like an anime fan's dream, right? Not so for melancholic author Osamu Dazai. Your your Dazai from Bungo Stray Dogs is going to another world? <laughs> Basically. Who would quite literally prefer to drop dead. Video games haven't even been invented yet when he gets re-yanked into another world in 1948. All the fantastical adventures he keeps running into is just getting in the way of his poetic dream of finding the perfect place to die. But no matter how much he risks his hide, everything seems to keep turning out okay. Follow a miserable hero like no other in this cheerfully bleak isekai comedy. I said maybe, bro. It's just a darker version of isekai Jisa. Koi wa futurote wari kirinai. Jun Shirasaki and the Jinguji sisters are childhood friends and neighbors. When Jun's first girlfriend, the older sister Yumi, breaks up with him, she says something that complicates the three people's relationship their first love and their romance so the reason why i know about this show is because there was another manga i was reading at the time uh that was about twins this show is honestly it's going to be one of those trashy shows and we live for that ali because we love drama so yeah it's maybe all right next one kimito boku no saigo no senju arui wa sekai ga Hajimaru Seisen Season 2. Our Last Crusade or The Rise of a New World Season 2. I know this one by heart as well because I've, I've watched the first season. <laughs> this is like the first, this is the first Season 2 uh, anime of that's getting a maybe. Right, this show, in, 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 if for those who have not watched Season 1, is um, Romeo and Juliet in a fantasy world. But Romeo and Juliet already did that in the anime form. I'm going to give it a maybe. Because this show, when it first came out, was a hit and miss. And it's been a while since I've actually watched this first season. Because the first season came out 2017, I want to say. 2020. So, four years. It's been four years. It's been a while. Bye, bye, Earth. I got an easy title. I got an easy title. Screw you, Ali. <laughs> in, a, in a world of anthropomorphic animals, Belle Lablac was born as the only human being having no fangs no fur or scales she was called faceless and she lived a lonely life with no one else she could identify with i want to be part of the world with such longing in her heart she decides to set out on a journey to find her roots carrying the runding a sword as tall as she is she doesn't even know how many adverse adversities await her along the way so honestly this is a maybe light in films for Rosai, Koshimizu Ami, Sawashiro, Miyuki, Suda Ken, Inoki Joni, Hayami Sayu. So th- this cast is stacked. This cast is so stacked, Ali. Byro's eye is doing so many animes this season. Asuka's doing the opening song. This is such a stacked anime. Yeah. It's so weird. It's a, it's a maybe, but we're gonna watch it. Action, adventure, fantasy. Naze boku no sekai wo da dare mo obete nai no ka. Why nobody remembers my world? Question mark. 
In a time when the great war between five rival races for supremacy on earth ended with humanity's victory led by the hero Sid, the world suddenly gets overwritten right before the eyes of a boy named Kai. In this rewritten world, Kai witnesses humanity's defeat in the war as a result of Sid's absence, where dragons and demons now rule the land, and Kai himself has become a forgotten existence to all humans. However, after encountering the mysterious girl Rinne, Kai, in evolve, well, Kai resolves to break free from this rewritten fate. In a world without a hero, he inherits the sword and martial skills of the hero Sid and challenges the powerful enemy races that dominate the land. There's some familiar faces in this cast, I will say that much. I'll, I'll give it a maybe, I, I want to see where this goes. So we'll give it a maybe. The next show has already piqued my interest because this is a remake. It's it's a remake of Ultimate Muscle. I think this is a remake. So it's not a remake, actually. It's uh, it's continuation. For you do not know, it's about wrestling, but with aliens. This is not going to bother because it is a sequel to a show that Ali and me have not watched. And yeah, in the synopsis, just says it's to commemorate the anime's 40th anniversary. Make heroine ga usiki. Too many losing heroines. Who are you calling a loser? As the background of the class, I, Kazuhiko Nukumizu, witnesses, witnessed a popular girl, Anayanami, getting rejected by another guy. Even though he said we'll get married, don't you think he's pretty mean? When did he say that? When we were four or five years old. That doesn't count, right? With this, the losing heroines, like Raymond Yakishio, from the track and field club and chika komari from the literature club yo ddlc nukimizuku there are two types of girls childhood friends or cheating cats i see well that's a bold statement there's a fortune for those who shine only after losing losing heroines the curtain to the mysterious coming of age story makings opens now it's it's about girls that have been rejected multiple times and you know they become friends over it but the main characters um, heard that when the first girl got rejected this is a maybe because i kind of want to see where it goes um considering that the synopsis is absolute jack yeah it's the synopsis does not help it whatsoever like the synopsis made me go i'm not gonna watch this like i have no idea what this is about but i'm i don't want to watch this based on the synopsis this is alone this is maybe at three of my dear moments uh in the near future a sudden unexplained sea rise has left much of human civilization underwater uh ikaruga natsuki a boy who lost his mother and his leg in an accident some years later returns disillusioned from a harsh life in the big city to find his old countryside uh countryside home half soiled in the sea Left without a family, all he has is his name is the ship and a submarine left to him by his oceanologist grandmother and her debt. His only hope to restore the dreams for the future that he has lost is to take up the opportunity uh, presented to him by his, the suspicious debt collector, Catherine. The set sail to search for the sunken ruins of, the gran of his grandmother's laboratory in order to find, find a treasure room and says, wait, what? Laboratory in order to find a treasure rumor says she left there. But what they find is not rich as a jewel. It is a strange girl lying asleep in a coffin at the bottom of the sea. Atri. Atri is a robot, but her parents and her wealth of emotion would fool anyone into thinking she's a living, breathing human being. In gratitude for being savage, she makes a declaration to Natsuki. I want to fulfill my master's final order. Until I do, I'll be your leg. In a little town slowly being enveloped, uh, by the sea ocean an unforgettable summer is about to begin for the boy and the mysterious robot girl just reminds me of plastic memories not gonna watch this so the original sengoku yoko came out a couple of months ago it was supposed to be 39 episodes but because of the reception to it they decided they're going to take time and actually reanimate quite a lot of stuff so that they people would enjoy it but i dropped it back when it was airing because it was quite Same. boring but so it's not gonna it's gonna be a not gonna bother for me and Ali. shy second season yeah. Um, this is a maybe, it's a season two maybe. The reason why I say maybe is because it was enjoyable first season. An award-winning manga, it was enjoyable. But people say that it does get better in this arc. So we'll see what happens. Madogushi Dahlia wa Utsumukanai. 
Kutsu Mukanai. Dahlia in Bloom. Uh, after dying off overwork in Japan, classic, Dahlia is reborn into an, a world filled with magic, classic. Raised by a master of magical tool making, kinda classic. Still develops a passion, she develops a passion for the craft and becomes engaged to her father's apprentice. Cool. Uh, before her father can see her wed, however, he suddenly passes away. As if this weren't enough, on the day before their wedding, her fiancé announces that he's in love, but not with her. Dahlia finally realizes that she needs to live for herself. She vows to be her own woman from now on and devotes herself to her craft, even if it's not quite the quiet life she was hoping for. From a chance encounter with a knight to start their, her own company, there are challenges aplenty on the horizon, but this young craftswoman is no longer a shrinking violet. She's Dahlia, and she's ready to be, to bloom. So this reminds me of Ascendance of a Bookworm meets um, the Seventh Loop anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seventh Loop. I'm gonna give this a maybe. Next anime, it's gonna be a not gonna bother. It's Near Automata version 1.1a part two. Na nare hana nare 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 cheer for you. <laughs> the feeling of wanting to cheer someone on. Uh, where does it come from? Six high school girls with diverse hobbies, skills, and personalities, each carrying their own worries. They run, shout, collide, daydream. When the pure desire to support aligns, their cheer resonates in the heart of those involved. The support of these six high school girls from Gunma might change the world a little bit. This is a not gonna bother. Mob Kara Hajimaru Tansaku Eiyutan. A nobody's way up to an exploration hero level. Meet Kaito Takagi, your typical high schooler with a low profile. He spends his days exploring dungeons in Japan, hunting slimes for some extra cash. On the side, he quietly admires his childhood friend, a popular girl in class. One day, a rare, a rare golden slime shows up, and, def and after Kaito defeats it, he finds a super valuable item, a card that can summon mythical beings. He decides to use it and summons a stunning warrior maiden. Now Kaito has a chance to rise above his ordinary explorer life. Get ready for a modern fantasy story filled with battles. Why am I comparing this to solo leveling? I was I was actually gonna say that, but then I thought of a different anime completely different. Which one um, did you think of? The dungeon, the dungeon only I can enter. Yeah, this is a maybe though. Yeah. Kiji Harem, which translates to pseudo harem. The main character wants to have a harem but the main girl likes the main character so to satisfy his needs because they're both in the acting club she makes these different personalities in her head and whenever the main character asks for that personality to come out she'll come make that personality come out so if she wants if he wants the little sister character she'll come out if she wants the teaching badass she'll come out so depending on the mood of the main protagonist this girl will then adapt to it and then actually make that girl a reality and the reason why i'd like that is because hayami sayori's vocal range is going to be exploited a lot during this and i'm going to enjoy every minute of it i'm giving this a must watch ali i've been so. warning over this anime ever since i saw it kami no to oji no kikan tower of god return of the prince this is one of those shows because it's been a while um, since the first season. So the first season came out in 2020. It's been again four years. So this is a maybe. Delicio Nursery or Delicio, you choose, is Delicio. Uh, Dali Delicio is an aristocrat from the prestigious Delicio family and an elite member of the Blood Pact Council who has a promising future. He is ordered to carry out a certain mission by the Blood Pact Council, the highest governing body of vampires. But Dali uh, flatly refuses. When Gerhard, Dino and Henrik, who are frustrated members of the Diet, go and try to persuade Dali, they find Dali cradling a young child of himself. Meanwhile, a mysterious uh, a mysterious series of murders targeting vampires occur in the streets. There seems to be some sort of past connection between Dali and the antisocial organization, organization Pendulum, which is believed to be the mastermind. Pendulum. Okay. With all our blood and pride, let's show them, let's show that we can achieve both duty and child rearing. Rearing. Noblesse oblige. Child care. Pious aristocrats. Will it be possible to balance the splendid gothic world 
with the careless child rearing that takes pride in. What is this show? I was thinking like Shadow House or something. I don't think I'm gonna watch this. I don't want to watch this. Kimi no Todeke season three. This is a must watch for anyone out there who has watched the original Tiki no Todeke. So the, we haven't had a season, uh, anything from Tiki no Todeke since 2011. It's been 13 years, Ali. Damn. I remember everything about this show and I love this. It has a live action. I haven't read the manga. And I'm happy I haven't read the manga because I can go to season three without bothering. Because I know the show, I remember the show, and it's one of those shows that I haven't forgotten. I'm going to give this a must watch. Thank you, everyone, for coming with us today on this magical journey. Let us know what you're going to be watching. These were our opinions, and we hope that you share your opinions in the comments below. So see you guys on the next one. Bye.